Hi Alex, good to see you again. Yeah, hi David, good to see you too. Thanks for joining me for another Grandmaster analysis of my 1800 games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, hopefully it's an interesting one this time because um, yeah, my opponent play, played some offbeat stuff. Well, I think I, I consider it offbeat. Um, it's not, it's not played very often and when people play it, I mean good players, it gives me trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and in terms of defense, I mean, obviously not very popular, um, but okay, possible, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, in the video I recorded, I said one of my old lines against the Nimzowicz. Uh -huh. And it's based on preventing black from playing bishop g4, which uh, I think is a typical idea for black. Yeah. To just get rid of uh, that bishop? Yeah, but not here. No. I mean, uh, you see, okay, first knight f3 is the most popular move, yeah, because it also gives um, uh, black the option to go e5 and transpose back to normal stuff, yeah? Uh -huh. But you should consider this, I mean, your move order, because uh, if I remember correctly, after e4, e5, we go bishop c4. Yeah. You can go e3. So, I mean, people knowing this, they may trick you, okay? Like this, if you play knight f3, they go e5, and now you're kind of out of your uh, lines yeah so maybe you should think about this a little yeah i mean here i'm still okay because i just put bishop c4 and it, it, it's fine okay okay yeah okay fine just uh, consider the move because what, what i try to avoid is the petrov ah, okay so it's mainly the petrov yeah, okay then then it should, should be fine yeah, should okay. be fine yeah so okay then it's not a big issue okay but, but after these things yeah i mean h3 uh, yes, but not here. I mean, first you should start with knight c3, okay? Because mm -hmm. again, you know, you're giving him an option to go e5, and then if you 5 then you can go bishop b5 and b4, which is a favorable line of the of the Spanish, the Rui Lopez. So knight c3, knight c3 is the, the more precise move, and after knight f6, now h3. Mm -hmm. Still with the same idea, e5, bishop b5, and d4. I, I don't play the Spanish, though. I... So oh yeah, that, that's another yeah, well, that's another thing with the move orders then. Yeah, that's another thing with the move orders yeah. because you basically you cannot avoid it. If, for example, okay, he plays e five, and now what? You're yeah. again stuck into some sort of Spanish shish. <laughs> yeah, he did play e yeah. five actually, and um, I did some weird stuff. So we'll see. But um, what about um? So what about this? Yes, obviously this is the alternative. Yes, of course. This is the alternative, and now there are two moves, d5 or e5, okay? Both have some sort of theory, but okay, I mean, yeah, it requires some studying, but I mean, it shouldn't be too much. Mm. So, I mean, that definitely solves your move order problems. D5. Yeah. So, maybe you should, you should look look at it, uh, I mean, okay, briefly, I suppose, because not so many people play knight c6, but... Yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. But, I mean, so what I did, it's... um. So what I did with this, I mean, is that really bad, or can I just keep playing this? No, 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 it's not bad. It's just that I mean, you're prematurely showing your intentions. Okay? Yeah. After, for example, knight c3, knight f6, you don't have to play h3. You can go d4. Yeah, he goes bishop g4. You go bishop e2, and again, there is some theory going on. Mm -hmm. So you're just showing your your intentions prematurely. It's not that it's bad. Yeah. That yeah, I think yeah, I think the reason I do that is because I just didn't want to learn any more theory in this line until I sorts out my theory in in different line and like more important things you know because you don't see this often enough <laughs> no, no, no no but you can use this opportunity to just learn it once and for all because okay it just happened that they, they played it against you and just use this opportunity to learn it okay because it's not much just a few lines not not much learn it and then you you know it forever and uh, okay in the next five years you get one more game with it okay you'll know what to do mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's how people, I mean, do it. I mean, uh, for example, we, we you're faced with some odd choice and then you use that opportunity to, to, to learn it, to study it, I mean, uh, well, and then, then you know forever uh, how to what to do against it. And then you, you forget about it I mean, because you have looked at it and you know what it should be done. And then you, that's how you slowly, you, you build your repertoire and you... Um, by studying these like odd lines, yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if it, I mean, there is always so much work to do in the other no, main lines, so you will never get to to learn it the, the these ones, yeah. So use the opportunity that they have played it against you, use it, learn it, and then then forget about it and go back to the main lines. It's a lot of work. 
of course it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I still have to start studying the QGD by you, which has a lot of stuff in it. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. But my point was, if H T is not, you know, absolutely terrible, then I can just keep playing oh, this because I, I know it's already. I know it, and um, um, I know I agree with your point. I show my hand too early, but uh, maybe now it's okay until I get around to picking something better. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, it's fine, it's fine. I mean, uh, the point is that, okay, it's just that it's more precise to start with knight c3 because after what happened, okay, he played e5, okay, d4, so takes, takes, fine, takes, takes, okay, takes, takes, probably not because the queen is quite all right on d4. Because you see, I mean, you can't avoid putting the knight on c3. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if that is the case, then uh, then put it early on because here after knight f6, h3, he can go to, for g6 is some sort of weird kind of territory and then you can go d4 bishop g7 bishop e3 and he then, has okay to, this is kind of he has to go for g6 why one second i'm so What's no he doesn't i mean it's not obligatory i mean it's a choice yeah after e5 I mean, go for spend. so it's just this right. anyway yeah i mean bishop b5 is kind of i think more more precise what's instead more? of d4 immediately okay b5 bishop. first and then d4. Mm. So it's kind of Spanish kind of territory. Okay, okay, no, no I, I appreciate this point, okay. Um, I'll have a look because I think I don't have too many variations in this knight of three line, so I'll try and go for this next time, maybe, yeah. Yeah, That's good. I mean, this is slightly other than Steinitz uh, defense, which is like in the Lopez, just let me, let me explain, okay? This is the line, d6, right? Mm -hmm. Something like this, d4, 9f6, 9c3, bishop d7. And now instead of the usual, let's say, castle or something, you have played h3. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's okay. Uh, possible. And then playable. So mm -hmm. it's kind of... Uh, this is the, the transposition you're getting. Yes, okay. So instead of h3, just develop a knight. Um, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. But what if... Um, so, I mean, we're, I guess we're doing some opening work here. Uh, yeah, yeah this okay but here if you want, if you want, yeah, we just take. that's okay yeah okay. yeah of course i mean bishop pair for nothing so knight d4 queen d1 yeah and then you go get the bishop out d3 maybe bishop e3 castle i mean no this is comfortable f4 f5 maybe this is okay 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 sounds good i'll, I'll go for that um okay I'll, that's um a nice little addition to my white repertoire <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's how I build it slowly, little by little. Yeah, because usually um, H3 gets me into hot water if somehow, I don't know if they can, but I was telling you that they kind of get a King's Indian attack going against me, and H3 is usually what I target, right? So. Yes, if it happens, yeah. Although here it's not very probable, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Usually when people play D6, they end up playing the, the King's kind of like Fianchetto systems. But I guess because yeah. the knight is on c6, they can't really get there anymore. Is that right? Yeah, you, yes, mostly yes, because the knight on c6 is just getting there too early. Okay. So normally, it's, it's more flexible to keep it on b8, and mm -hmm. then you have more options, yeah. And they go something like g6, bishop g7. But okay, this spirit slash modern uh, developments are kind of popular, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's okay, white has several very good systems against it so i mean it's a matter of choice to choose one and study so i mean yeah there are also some some systems with h3 and you don't get attacked yeah. so, I mean, but there is no way for him to take me into a perk slash mortar now is there <laughs> no now no, i mean yeah there is for example if he goes knight f6 you go knight c3 he goes g6 right yeah so now so now i've been moved ordered because one of the systems i learned against the perk Involved uh -huh. not developing the knight to f3 but playing f3 instead, the same George attack. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, then, then you are move ordered. Yes, that's true. Uh, that's not cool. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> so, you see, I mean, this is, this is interesting because you see, I mean, even with a, such a, I mean, a, a sideline like the Nimtsovich defense, yeah, which is not popular at all, you you have more other issues, yeah? Yeah. Because you know, there are some transpositional possibilities. So, if you're being practical, maybe just for you, to avoid all these these transpositional nightmares, you just to go d4 and move two, mm -hmm. and then start d5 and e5, and that's it. And and, and after after d4, they do what d5 you said. Um, so yeah, I, either d5 or e5, like both are possible. Uh, but I can still play slow, right? I can play d6 if they want, I suppose. 
So you win. Well, you move too. Now, I guess I can still play D6 or G6 or something slow. Yes, but with the knight on C6, this is not the, the most optimal way to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Just too slow, okay, okay. Because now, now with the knight on G1, you can play your system with the, against the priest, which is the uh, with F3, etc. Okay, I'll look into this then, um, because I don't like being move ordered, so... <laughs> <laughs> nobody does, nobody does. All right. She... Yeah, so, I mean, just from a practical perspective, it's for you, it's just simple to study this because then after knight f3 you see you have issues with the, with the yeah. spanish structures maybe and also with it so it's kind of uh, maybe just better to to go d4 and move two i'll have a so look I mean, maybe maybe i usually do go d4 maybe i made a mistake i'll have a look maybe usually i go d4 uh -huh. um yeah i'll take a look again okay i'll revise this opening lines okay. yeah, yeah okay okay all right okay. thanks alex yeah no no no, no problems yeah so let's keep looking because i'm sure there's some more interesting moments here so <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, D4. I've never played this kind of stuff with D4, but I thought it looks, uh -huh. it looks... Oh, it's natural, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, yes. Okay, this I'm not so sure, I mean, I probably would not take because the queen is kind of dominating mm -hmm, there, mm -hmm. but... But yeah. this is okay. So, I mean, it felt good, I guess, but I, I, I must have gone wrong somewhere here. I mean, here I played bishop g5. Ah, it's good. For yeah. Me, yeah, natural. Castles and I decided to long castle. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, this is one of the reasons actually why the the, the Steinitz defense in the in the Rui Lopez in the Spanish is not that popular because of the possibility of white to castling long. Uh, yeah, you can choose another plan. Develop the white squared bishop and, and, and mm -hmm. castle. Uh, the, 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 the most critical plan in these structures: e4, this center, e4 against d6. Which is so typical of the Chinese defense. So yeah, casting long is good. Okay, so I must have done something wrong later then because I, I... Oh yeah, because this is good so far. <laughs> um okay, so here h six. Like I guess this is an important moment, but um yeah, I moved my, I moved the bishop back because I looked at bishop to h four and I thought, um why did I I would say bishop four is okay, but Bishop what h four is okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah why not? I mean um, the, uh, the reason why not why was it? Oh, because I wanted to, my bishop to keep attacking his king side. So I wanted my bishop to. Because on on h four, it's not really attacking the king, is it? Well, no, but okay. The thing is that okay. This is the kind of annoying on this diagonal because if he moves the knight, then you exchange and put the knight on d five. So it's kind of making him making it more difficult for him to to develop. I mean, uh, the, the sensibility of this diagonal of bishop f six. I mean, knight on f6, bishop b7, queen d8 is kind of difficult for him to untangle. And from h4, you still support g4, g5. So it's not that you are mm. you have abandoned the king side. Okay, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, was that, you think, better than bishop e3, what I did? I mean, I'm not sure if it's better. I'm just saying it's possible. Okay. So, I mean, normally in the Steinitz, for example, uh, when h6, white almost always plays bishop h4. So It's probably so better it's, than... <laughs> That's why I'm saying it's from like from experience. Let's say, yeah, that's why okay. I say it's okay. But bishop e3 is fine again, yeah, because okay, here you're, you're basically using the fact that Kiev played h3, so there is no, no knight g4. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why it's possible. I mean, with the pawn on h2, it would not have been possible because knight g4 would have been somewhat annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah then you would have been forced to put it on h4. But here you have a choice, okay, you play bishop e3, which I still think is okay. So okay, no, sounds good. I haven't gone too wrong yet then so let's let's see then uh -oh. uh, c c5 okay this kind of double edge yeah because it weakens so much d5 and uh... yeah yeah and i understand that i have d5 but he still has um his knight protecting that square um but yeah i went back to d2 okay fine a6 um he's trying for b5 b4 yeah. i thought it was possible immediately i mean i thought he could just play this here because I can win a pawn, but it just looks scarier yeah, coming up. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's definitely more aggressive. I don't know. Okay, maybe not it's like this because. Not pretty good because you lose. The yeah, you lose. Was... Yeah, yeah. With the bishop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, I was just um quickly showing that you can win a pawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but uh, yeah, this maybe I'm not sure. Yeah, because uh, I mean, it's typical sacrifice uh, one pawn to open line against the king, so. I suppose this is possible. Maybe there is some compensation for, mm -hmm. for black. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But then again, a pawn is a pawn. So I mean, yeah. So a six instead. Um, 
and I played f3 here. Uh, maybe that's that's wrong. I mean, I wanted to free my knight. Um, uh, okay, yeah, I understand. But uh, I would be more inclined to sell g4 first. The difference is that after b5, I mean, obviously he's threatening this one, you can go bishop g2. And defend it, threaten e5, and still defend the, the, the pawn, yeah? So b4 is not such a threat. Okay, so maybe that's where I've gone wrong then. <laughs> This is not, this is what I at first sight at least this is like what I would consider. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't consider that. Um It's just natural because you're also finishing development, you're advancing your your king side uh, pawns, okay, threatening g five at any moment. And also finishing development, bishop g two, okay. I guess it felt a bit weird for me to put the bishop on g two when I don't know. That line, want, that line's supposed to be open for my rook or something, yeah? Yes, 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 I understand that, yes, but uh, here the thing is that things are still kind of happening also in the center, so you still try to control the center, and, and uh, for example, later on, if you need the g-file, the bishop can go like, let's say, f4, bishop f3, and then you still have the g-file, so it's not that you need it so quickly. Yeah, and then you get a 4-in-1 move as well, uh-huh. Yep. So, I mean, it's better to finish development, see how things develop, and then later on you 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 can use one or two tape because as long as you have a solid position in the center you can afford spending some one or two moves to to prepare and i shouldn't be scared that his attack feels like it's coming quicker <laughs> yeah but not really because i mean look i mean his pieces are not really ready to attack yeah his pawns are <laughs> but you can't attack without pieces right so okay yeah, no, that looks better. It definitely looks better because I did think F3 looked a bit weird after, um, especially when I wanted to play F4. Um, uh -huh. And my bishop was a bit passive. So, yeah, yeah that looks Yeah, good. I mean, this bishop on F1, where do, you, where do you develop it? So it's kind of... I mean, yeah. Okay, but still, I mean, it shouldn't be such a bad move. No, but I like that. I like that because... Well, I mean, okay, let's keep looking then and see if there, we find something more instructional. Um, I, oh, okay. I played king b1 here because I've been learning the St. George's attack and I knew that it was a, it's, um, good to protect the a2 pawn because the queen might go to a5 and attack the pawn and the knight might need a c1 square and that was my idea, just some sort of prophylaxis. Good, 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 excellent. Yes, yes, it's a good move, yes. Uh, bishop b6. Okay, then you start pushing. Yeah. b4, okay. 92. I'm, I'm not sure, for example, 92, yeah, okay, 92 is normal, but then this is also possible, so I don't know. Um, takes. Okay, takes, takes. Yeah, take, so take back with the pawn, you mean? You think that's okay? Yeah. I can't take with the queen, yeah. Hmm. So which way would he take, like this? I don't know, yeah, I suppose, yeah. So you think this is better for white? I mean, than... also, I would consider it at least, I mean, okay. I, I mean, I considered it, obviously, but I just didn't think it was better for white. Um, I, cons oh, I, mean... I considered it, but I thought huh? it looks it looks weird having that pawn there. Um... It's not that weird, but... Uh... I mean, he's getting the e5 square now as well, right? I mean, okay, e5, you can kick it away if, with your mm. forces. Getting the, but here it's more like a, you have to think how to continue because it looks tempting. Okay, put the bishop on d3, put the rook somewhere, start pushing, and then just uh, destroy him. And uh, but still, this, this I think requires a little bit more of more thinking because maybe he wants to put a bishop on f6, now on f5, or something. Yeah? Uh, so, I mean, uh, why should find a way how to control? Uh, those those pieces. I mean, you can you know so just push maybe... f4 now. Yeah, f4. Yeah, to control that one. Yeah, because the knight then it's kind of short of squares. And also, for example, in bishop f6, then you can go maybe h4 and then push g5 and chase that one away or two. Mm -hmm. So it's uh... okay. H this looks kind of promising. I don't know. That looks kind of promising. So this, I mean. Like I said, I, I would have considered it definitely, yeah. Okay, but okay, you also considered it, but you just made this evaluation that uh, maybe it's not that promising for white. Okay. Although to me, it does look promising. So, yeah, yeah. So, I 
I think I think that's the why I try to. That's nice. I think that's why I think it's important to have a a good opening theory because then you will have most likely seen something like this before. Whereas this structure is completely completely new to me. Like uh -huh. this pawn structure, no, I, no, I might have no, never played it before. <laughs> Yeah, no, in this structure, for example, you, 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 you indefinitely kill any activity against your king, yeah? Because you have a space advantage in the center and everything, right? And, okay, his pieces are cut off from the queen side, and he, he can't advance here easily, yeah? I mean, even if he does, he cannot join in with the pieces to, to continue with, with any sort of attack. So this is also, like, a, from a practical perspective, kind of useful to, to kill off any attack. Well, because here in the game, at least he has, he has his bishop alive and then maybe he can hope for something so mm -hmm. by, by shutting it down or maybe even exchanging it i mean you, you keep control of the center so let's say 97 f4 so i mean you see i mean you control all these piece, uh, uh, central squares yeah okay I mean, and also uh, e4 you can also control very easily so basically controlling the whole center and this makes it very safe for you okay because whenever you control the center he can never attack so it's I think, I think, yeah, I think that's maybe um, zeroing in a problem in my thinking then, because I very rarely think about controlling the center. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, very important. I know it's important. Um, just kind of get carried away with all the kind of plans. Um, so maybe uh -huh. I need to just bring you back a bit and start thinking yeah, about. Basically, basically, basically. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe a, a good plan is let's control the center and nothing more. Whereas I always try and think, oh, let's kill his king. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, yeah. No, first control the sensor, then kill the king. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. There's a lot of things, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, if, we, if you think about, I mean, at this position, um, where is it? So here, if you think about controlling the center, then yeah, I can see why 95 is good, because after that simple calculation, you see, well, I'm controlling the center, I must be fine. Whereas the way I saw it, it was like, oh, that pawn structure looks weird. I have no idea what's going on or how to continue, so. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, no, I, mean, I mean, look, I mean, these, these things, like, basic things, I mean, you, even I think of these things during a game, so it's not like a, a beginner's thing to no, do or something. No, of course not, of course not, yeah. It's like... Uh, I always say that I think for almost any sport, like, if you can just master the basics, you're going to be really yeah. good because <laughs> getting the basics uh, right every time is not easy, you know? Um, like a footballer, for a footballer, you know, if they can just pass the ball, short passes to the feet yeah. every time, that's gonna make them professional, probably. You know, <laughs> most people when they play football, they just kick the ball and it goes different directions, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true, it's true. Okay, yeah, yeah no, I, I will try and take that away and um, try and remember to think a bit more about the center and just playing yeah. for controlling the center. Yeah. Okay, good, good. So he did okay, ninety seven. Yeah, cause he. But I thought he's getting more control over a g five here. Yeah, but that's kind of irrelevant because he can kick it off like easily with h four, f four. Yeah, after but I played f four to control it. Yeah, so I mean, it makes this net completely ridiculous. Yeah, no, I agree. So let's find out how I got into trouble then. <laughs> I got into trouble. Oh, I did, okay. I did. Um, so let's see then. Uh, so it's not here yet. Um, cause yeah, it looks okay. Um, yes. A five. Okay. I played rook g one to face the king. Okay. And no, help G5. For you, so uh, uh, maybe it's a bit of chill. difficult. I mean, yeah, Rook G1 is obviously one one move. Uh, I don't know, Bishop G2, finishing development is another. Knight G3 can be an interesting move, one to put a knight somewhere close to the king. Mm -hmm. what kind of tempting moves here um, a lot. Yeah? I mean, even F5. Mm -hmm. No, I looked at F5. Um, I didn't um, like that he gets control over. G5. Yeah, he does, he does. Okay, I'm just saying that it's a move you consider. I mean, maybe it's not a good one, but it's still a move you consider because mm -hmm. it's a, an aggressive move, attacking move, so uh, something you also consider. Maybe it's not a good one, but you still need to take a look at it. So many, many moves here. I mean, yeah. this is a, a position which requires more thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't look at bishop to g2, actually. Um, just again, it, it felt unnatural blocking the path against the king, but uh, uh -huh. I think I will next time. <laughs> No, because bishop g2, then the bishop can go to f3, you know, and then still liberate the, the g file, but still it's a, it's a developed piece, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. g4, g4, maybe, maybe you can push h4 and g4 is not hanging. So it's, um, 
And so it's a normal move. And this is from the Sicilian, you know, when you have this structure, bishop on e3, pawns on f e4, f4. And the bishop, white bishop on, on f3 is kind of, uh, in, the, in many lines, very good because controls e4, prevents d5, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also supports g4 in some lines. So it's a uh, this collocation of, of, uh, of the bishops on e3, f3 behind the pawns on e4, f4. It's, it's okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I just wanted to get at his queen quicker somehow, I suppose. Uh -huh. Rook g1, but I guess he's, he's, he's saying it's not terrible. Okay. C4. And then here I started thinking, okay, so C3 is a problem, and I didn't really know how to stop it. No, I mean, you can stop it, you can play C3 yourself, so. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, why did I not think of that? It didn't even come to my mind. Yeah. So I guess that's a good move because if he takes, I take with a knight and that looks good. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, you can also move the queen if you want. You put it on d4. Uh, put it on e1 if you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Although, okay, maybe okay because possible, yeah. So yeah, you can, you can do a few things. Huh? But then, yeah. Annoying, but... But I guess the best thing would be to stop C3 and play C3 yourself. Yeah, yeah, you can play C3 yourself, yeah. Yeah, even if he gets the open B file. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah, okay, he gets the file, but the thing is that now you get D4 for your bishop, and then the bishop from D4 can defend B3 if necessary if the knight moves. So, and also, you, you still. Uh, and the knight of C3 is quite good here, so. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it, it looks good, it looks good, yeah, and his bishop's blocked in, the e6 bishop, it's not doing anything. No, yeah, I mean, now you have taken f5, you take on c4, I mean, kind of, pretty, looks pretty good. Mm-hmm, no, I agree, I agree, so, I don't, c3 didn't even come to mind, honestly, like. No, okay, Th these kind of things, I mean, you should, I mean, okay, maybe it's difficult for you to explain why, but for me, uh, kind of, just, uh, this basic principle of candidate. I mean, I think, no, I, I understand candidate moves, but for candidate moves, to consider them, you need to see them. Whereas, like I'm trying to say here is, I was completely blind to the fact that I could play C3 to defend myself. And I think it's because there is the principle that you're not supposed to move the pawns in front of your king where you're being attacked. So uh -huh. just, I think because of that, in my mind, like C3 over, overrode the, is like, the... yeah, it's like an illegal move almost, you know, it's like... <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah, well, this, yeah, then you just have to be more aware of what's going on in your brain because obviously, I mean, yeah, it's good to, to know principles, but they should not hinder your. Of your course language. not, of course not. Yeah. Um, okay, so C3. Um, I think that goes back to like I've said to you, I feel uncomfortable defending. So as soon as somebody starts attacking me, I start making worse moves. And I think it's um, easier to find attacking moves. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. I'll be even, for example, moving the queen. Why not move the queen and just. Avoid C3. Yeah, I, th I, th I did think of moving the queen, but I thought maybe I need to go uh, and advance my attack first, so I play G5. Okay, no, that, that looks also interesting. Okay, it's not the most, let's say, technical way to play because you don't want to allow a mess when you're better. Mm -hmm. Because you are better because the man is completely out of the game. Yeah. Okay. Basically, when you're better, you, don't, you want to control things, not to allow a mess, but okay. Because after G5, you do allow some mess when he pushes C3. Your king also gets weakened, so it's kind of a... So, you're saying this is okay? Well, I suppose so, yeah. Because what about a4, though? Um... A4, okay, a4 is fine, but... Because um... if you no, get... No, that's okay, because it takes you take with a c pawn, so... Um... Oh, okay, it takes take with a c pawn, but then, you know, queen to h, a5... I mean, I, the knight comes to c1 and just defends everything, so it's not that... <laughs> okay. Okay, takes, takes, okay. I mean, it's still, it's, it, I, it's not preferable to C3, but it's kind of... Okay, no, I understand. C3 is a preferable move. Um, it makes sense. Um, I have... Okay, that's good to find that moment. I think maybe that's the beginning of my problems then. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens. Because, okay, maybe, who knows? Maybe you just attack it. It's just possible. Let's see. G5, okay, it's natural. Fine. Let's see what happens. Take, take C3, yeah? Okay, moving Okay, moving the queen, I suppose, yeah. I think I might have lost a pawn here, let's see. Okay, I mean, if you're worried about losing the pawn, you should move the, you should put the queen on c1. I know, I know, I know, yeah. No, I know. But this, oh, well, I don't like 
like this so much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe the problem. I think. Just compare. Okay? You you have a great position now. Here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Before you. Here. Yeah. yeah. You have a great position. And everything. Okay. You can keep it under control with CT and everything. And what you're doing is, okay. First you you you, uh, let's say you. Okay, if you're being like really pedantic, yeah, you're worsening your structure. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's first. Second, you're laughing to to uh, to uh, weaken your king. Yeah. Uh, you're giving away the bishop pair. And fourth, you're getting into an end game where his bishop pair is. I know, uh, I know, I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I yeah, could tell. I could tell right now that my position sucked. So I thought yeah. I was I was outright losing here. Um, the problem so is the problem is one, sorry sorry structure to pair and then prospectus and then so it's like all of that things happen yeah like, <laughs> i know i know <laughs> and so i think but i think okay. if i'm trying to be objective like i need i need to really get better at finding defensive moves because as soon as somebody puts pressure on my king honestly I like agree. in any game against any rated player i start suffering a lot and um don't find good moves um no, but I mean, I think maybe it's uh, psychological because uh, maybe you, you kind of become anxious, you panic, you, you, uh, you become afraid or I mean, all these feelings, I think maybe they... they I, should... I don't know, it's feelings, it's just, I don't know, um, maybe, I guess, I'll, I'll try and pay more attention to see what's going on, but... <laughs> no, because I, I think there should, it should be feelings because, I mean, uh, uh, why would, I mean, somebody I else... Would moves easily in that position and you will. I would so, argue so. that it's the fact that everything I've studied in chess has always been like finding attacking combinations, finding attacking plans. Like do you know of any good books that teach you how to defend? I mean I think Karyakin should write one, but I don't think there are, there is one, is there? A book that says, you know, here are all these puzzles, find the best defensive move. I don't know, I haven't seen that. Well I have to think actually. So I mean, in the Bransky books there must be Okay. There are there are always some some um, puzzles and maybe even some dedicated to defense and because I think that actually there is one one book by Dresky called Attack and Defense so uh, that one should probably work but that one is difficult I mean all Dresky's books are kind of tough yeah yeah even, even for grandmasters are difficult so okay uh, something else uh, so just, it's a, so it has defensive puzzles yeah. Defensive mind. Yeah, it doesn't come to mind now, actually. Defensive puzzle. Nobody does defensive puzzles. Well, that, that, that's what I mean. You see, it's not that I'm scared or have problems, it's that I haven't had enough practice. Like, uh -huh. um, yeah. Okay, just... okay, but, but here at least you, you, you become more aware of what's going on, yeah? Mm -hmm. At least, okay, you, you, we have gone through some situations where you were under attack, so. And then you see that actually you, what you need to do is keep calm and just find the moves, okay? Because. Very often, uh, I mean, but, the way to win is to, to pick up material, suffer for a, for a while, and then convert. But it takes more time, you know, like, because I played against a guy in the tournament, in the rapid one, and um, he was just getting a, an attacking position from the King's Fianchetto's was black. So I told you, it looked like a King's Indian defense, but it wasn't. A, it was a perk or a modern or something. And his moves just seemed to be all natural, you know, put the queen here, the bishops are pointing to my king. Uh, and uh -huh. from my position, it feels like, okay, if I make a mistake, my king is getting grilled. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, those two positions definitely do exist. I mean, easier to play positions or positions than an attack. But, okay, this one is not, this one was not the case. I mean, uh, the one here, we're looking at. But yeah, no, no, obviously those positions exist, yes. And they should be avoided, obviously, yeah. Okay. okay. But I'm talking about positions where, uh, okay, uh, the opponent has some temporary, and here the keyword is temporary, mm -hmm. activity or initiative, which with uh, a few precise moves you manage to control or extinguish, okay, and then uh, just you, you start getting the initiative back to yourself and you, you go on and mm -hmm. realize advantage, material advantage, positional advantage, etc. So defending is, a, is an integral part of the game. Even sometimes, as I explained, as part of a realization of an advantage, yeah? for example, we have one upon or something, it has this temporary flurry of activity, mm -hmm. you keep it under control, and then this last like, two, three moves, maybe five maximum, okay? Then you keep it under control, you don't panic, you just keep it tight, and then you, I mean, then the uh, things go back to, to normal, and then you start again. Uh, your, your material or positional advantage comes to, to the fore, and then 
you're the initiative breaks yourself and you start uh, uh, realizing your advantage. Yeah, I think so, I think yeah, it's important to to learn to not have the initiative. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, for example, I learned this like a long time ago when I was studying Fisher's games because very often he would just pick up some risky looking pawn or something. Okay, he would submit himself to an attack. Yeah. Or anything, but just he would defend coolly and then he would remain material up and then he wins. Yeah. So, well, of course, I also used to do this, but I haven't seen that many of course games. I mean, I haven't studied him, studied him in, in, in detail, detail, yeah, because I, I, I have studied Fisher, Fisher so that's why I'm saying Fisher. So, this is what I learned from him, right? You know, sometimes he would just, uh, they would play f5 against him, he would take g5, okay? Mm -hmm. And he would keep this double f7, f5 pawns, for example, yeah? Mm -hmm. But it's an extra pawn, okay? He defends, okay, then he remains a pawn up, mm -hmm. and then he will win in the yeah, game yeah. or something. So it's, 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 a, it's a good strategy to, 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 um, to employ, yeah? Because it's also an aggressive strategy, aggressive from a defensive perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's attacking and say, okay, come, come attack me. Yeah, I'll pick up all the material, but then I'll defend and I'll win. So it's a, it's, it's a play for a win from a defensive perspective. So it's, a, it's not common, okay? But mm -hmm. it kind of can be very, very useful and efficient. Yeah. So bear this in mind as, as, as an option, at least. Of course, yeah. Um, so back to the game, I guess. Um, so hold on. So I, I guess after I allowed this, I mean, there's nothing better to do. Yes, I'm looking at it. I'm not so happy about it anymore. Yeah. I mean, definitely you must not take the knight. Okay. That's, okay. I mean, neither four comes to mind, for example. I don't. I'm, I'm playing a pawn down. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you hit that pawn, that was your decision to play queen d4 and hit that pawn because if you don't, didn't want to, you go queen c1, but at least you have an open file. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I don't know, what happens after h4? I don't know. Yeah, um, I thought bishop f6. Yes, and now. Um, I don't know, queen d3, knight f3, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. No, I, I can't say I like this. But I can't say I like this. For white. For white, yeah. <laughs> okay, just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, just to be clear, yeah. I mean... No, I think I mean, here maybe it was preferable just to go there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least keep the pawn, yeah? Yeah. But still, this is not uh, optimal, yeah? No, no, no. Just compared to the position of the city or something, you just. Uh, and why would you allow this to your king, yeah? Of course, of course. Okay, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. So, that was a key position then when I didn't play c3. Yeah. So. And I think the end game is kind of. should be lost. Uh, it should be lost. No, I agree. I, th I think he went wrong here. I'll show you. So, here. I think here he went wrong. He should just take with the rook, and then uh, it's horrible because he takes with the rook. What I have to make room for my king or develop my bishops? So I don't know here. Then just I don't know here. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, <laughs> but what he did was that. Uh, sorry, he took with the bishop, and I felt that he gave me some play. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's still, it's still not, not doing great. Oh, of course, of course, still not great. But he gave me some play. Whereas if he play, if he took back with the rook here, I feel like I can't do anything. Oh, not good. No, no, but um, after he took with the bishop, I get a little bit of play and then eventually he goes wrong, so... Okay. Yeah, at least you solidify your position like this in a way. Yeah, so, you know, I'm not getting mated anymore. No, no, no. No, it's just horrible, what is this? Yeah, I mean, that, that was completely terrible, so I was like, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am playing for winning. Yeah, yeah, I was a pawn up, but I think I had like two minutes left at this point, so. Wow. <laughs> Not increment, as you know. Um, it's even worse. But, um, yeah, I thought at least, at least a draw, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah because, because when you, you just made your look just horribly, horribly passive. My work. Yeah, yeah you know, because, because you put it like very passive. Like, okay, like, so what's the better move here then? Um, no, I was thinking about the five. Yeah, I thought about that, but then I thought my e pawn is on a dark square. He might go and win it. I don't know. Bishop, uh, sorry, rook to d five. There's a risk. Mm -hmm. I think it was just a check or something. Maybe it's not working. Okay, I'm not saying it's working, but maybe it's not working. Just that I don't want to make my rook passive. Okay, yeah, yeah. Before d five, so maybe not working. Maybe not working. Maybe not working. Maybe not working. So well. Ooh, well. But you know, the, uh, the the maxim is the rook belongs behind a pawn, right? Yes, but not not when the, the pawn is so further back. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's in the point, for example, if you, if you play rook h4. Yeah, so that's the mistake you make. You should have played rook h4 here. Yeah. So who's rook more active? Yeah, yeah his, his. And your rook is behind the pawn, but then what, what, what does, does he do there? Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's a good point. So uh, he missed rook h4 then. Yeah, I mean, he would have played late. I mean, king of six, he still could have played rook h4 at the mm -hmm. moment, yeah. And just until he started pushing, but I'm sure rook h4 is possible. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of still good for, for, for that. It shouldn't be losing. I mean, it should be some sort of comfortable draw because yeah. the, the rook is very active, whereas it's passive, so it, that's why maybe I would have played rook g3 here. Defend it from the side and then try to activate somehow the king and so on. Okay, okay. Still, that makes sense. The king is active. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, look at your point. Yeah, yeah, and no, I think he made a few mistakes in the end game, which helped me. Because <laughs> you after bishop before, what do you do? You are either push, but then your king is for your route after bishop mm -hmm. here, or you take, and then again he gets some stuff against the king, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Or, or even with the bishop, and your king is still in mean, difficult to conclude in the game, so. I think it would have been better, Bishop P.T. is just his consent, because what's the idea? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess he was trying to block my, my king off by not letting me use C1. Okay, yes, I understand, but still better to define, okay, to define the position on the, on the queen side, because here you can at least open something with the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. three, king out somehow. I don't know, H4, H4, I mean H4, maybe pretty mature, because the board cannot go that far. I mean, the, 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 the main problem we must solve is the king. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Addressed. Yeah, no, I, I know. I think um, I was playing very, very quick moves now, just trying to. I was happy with the draw, so that's what I was ah, for, you know, because I thought, okay, I'm going to attempt him into trading that pawn, because if we trade the rooks, um, uh -huh. then, uh -huh. um, then it's yeah, probably yeah. a draw. But. I mean, obviously, now that I have more time, it's probably bad because of. I don't know, I guess he cannot play rook to h5 because I play bishop to e2 or something. Anyway. No, I mean, bishop to doesn't, doesn't matter. Like I said, I mean, the, the most important thing is yeah, of course. the king. Mm -hmm. So, because h4, I mean, uh, the pawn is not a threat in itself because he cannot pass past uh, h6 and he's kind of active. The king can come. Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. So, it's. Uh, it can't do much damage by itself. Like I said, the most important thing is to activate the king in this position. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree, yeah. Um, I, I was trying to lure him into trading rooks because I wanted to draw. <laughs> yeah, he's helping you. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, now he's helping. I mean, yeah. yeah, look. <laughs> Voluntarily, he activated your king, which is just horrible. Yeah. And that's why he actually wins the game for me, because... Exactly, so you can see the difference, yeah? No, of course, yeah. Um, so my plan was just to get my king active and try and um, get his rook out of the way. Even though he's getting counterplay because he can yeah. go and grab the a2 pawn. I did not okay. see that move. <laughs> oh, well. Anna, he made a mistake here. Yeah, no, he wants to draw, he has to go to d4. Right? What do you mean to d4? 
Uh, d4, d4. Ah, uh, d4. No, okay, but still you're, you're pressing here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're still pressing here. Okay. But I'm probably going to lose the e4 pawn. I think I think I had 30 seconds at this point or something, so... But yeah, he made uh, he made it easy for me because he just put his king on c2 and he was locked yeah. out forever. Now it was easy. Just gonna go quickly because I don't think it's too interesting now. Because yeah, no, the no, bishop, I was saying the bishop is the same color as the queen in square, so why should be winning here? Which is why I went into it. Yes, yes. And I was pre-moving here everything. <laughs> Turns out it's very easy to pre-move this kind of endgame. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 true, yeah. True. Yeah, that's, um, that's it. Yeah. So I rescued it in the endgame, but yeah, he helped me a lot. So, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but I think, yeah, that's why I was trying to find openings that would give me more endgames, because I do feel like my endgame skills are probably better than the majority of 1800 players. Um, where I feel uh -huh. I have a problem is in the openings, um, still. Just when people move order me or play some weird openings yeah. that give me positions that I don't know, and there's too much to calculate. Um, yes, yes, yes. It gets annoying. No, I mean, but, but, but okay, on the positive side, the openings are the easiest to solve. Well, you, just... you know, <laughs> there is chessable and everything, but it still takes a lot of work. Like, it's still so no, many. No, no, yeah, it does take a work, yeah. but that work is kind of, I would. Straightforward, you mean? That's what I mean. It's not easy. It's, it's, it's The solution is there, but it needs the work done, right? Yes, this is the work, but the, the type of work is not as taxing, I would say, as improving your tactical vision or, or something like that. Because when you improve your tactical vision, you need to uh, solve tactical exercises, for example. Yeah, while well, with the openings, it's more uh, like reading a book, okay? Well, so, remembering stuff, I mean, that's why chessable exists, though, right? So yeah, exactly, chessable, yes, that's yes, the trick. <laughs> yes, yes. With, for me, at least, it's, it's easier than yeah, yeah, yeah. solving the tactical stuff, so... Uh, yeah, it requires time and work, obviously, but uh, I would say it's it's uh, anybody can do it. Yeah. So for well, you, maybe. is there is there like um, some openings where you hate playing, or are you comfortable in everything you play? Like every yeah, pretty much everything. Yeah. But that's, I think that's what's important, you know, because for me there is I know which openings when my opponent plays. I'm like, oh my god, not this again. Uh, ah. And I was just it's um, and it's I struggle. So when I play that over the board tournament. I lost two whites against perks because somehow my opponent gets a king attack going and um, I don't I don't know it was I just don't handle it well so you know I know I need to study that opening because um, that's a big problem losing two whites against um, yeah <laughs> yeah no, no, no not good at all yeah, yeah. But, but at least you know what you should be doing yeah okay you know you see you exactly where your problems are which openings and then you study them and then you can solve the problem yeah yeah no I think um. I do have a problem with um, against the queen's pawn. That's why I want to learn your book next because yeah. I actually finished okay. learning um, the Scandinavian and I actually won two games with the Scandinavian. Uh, oh, excellent! And I nearly beat an I am with the Scandinavian as well <laughs> because I knew. Oh, good, good. This is fantastic! This yeah. is fantastic! Like you remember that that game of yours we analyzed in the Scandinavian, and I told you you're treating these structures well. Yeah. So. Yeah. This has been confirmed in, in practice because yeah. you're getting great results and you probably enjoy playing it. So this is fantastic. I mean, once you have discovered your okay opening, that's just great. You just enjoy playing it. It's rewarding. It's, it's it gets you points and everything. Just fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I still I still managed to lose the game against I am, but I think it took like seventy moves. What happened was um he actually went a pawn down and and he went like ah oh, on his face. He, he was like devastated. But it wasn't so bad because by me taking the pawn, I actually gave him chances. And after he saw that, he calmed down, and um, eventually he, the pressure was too much, and he won. Um, <laughs> but for one second, he thought he was losing. Um, but I think the position was was drawn for a while. But um, yeah, it's ten no, minutes plus ten seconds, not easy. <laughs> no, 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 but this is fantastic. This is great news because I mean, uh, uh, I mean, finding this opening and enjoying it and see, I mean, getting results and great positions. Okay. You lost that game, but you were you were winning and all these things. So it's nothing to do with the opening. The opening has been success. So this is the, the important thing. Yeah, yeah. And I think the most important thing is not even if I'm enjoying it that much, but just having a complete set of lines because I don't feel surprised by any of them. You know, um, yes. it gives you more of a sense of responsibility that it's in your repertoire. You should know them, and um, it's a good starting block. Now I need to analyze these positions concretely and stuff, but. Um, yeah, I'm almost ready to start a new book. I hope I'll start start this week, actually. Um, 
So, then, then you tell me how it goes because I'm also curious to know. Oh, I will. I mean, it'll probably take me a month to finish, but after I finish it, I should be playing the Queen's Gambit the client like you. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you get better results than me. All right. Okay, Alex. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And you're welcome. I hope you have a good rest of your Sunday. All right. Yeah, thank you, David. You Cheers. Too. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.